content to be where the light and darkness meet on the edge of the horizon through the trees I am a narcissist crippled with self-doubt I've got a courage that brings me to my knees hello hi and howdy how's everybody doing today I certainly hope everyone's doing great if you're new here welcome to my channel my name is Jenny if you're a return visitor, welcome back. If you get anything out of the content, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel to grow. Um, before I get into the story, I want to say that I want to apologize that if I come across really nasal, um, I have allergies and they are kicking my tail. But today's story will be a suggestion from Bex Babes 13 and Debbie 5725. And if y'all see this, thank you both so much for the suggestion. Let's dive in. Star Hobson was born on the 21st of May in 2019 in West Yorkshire, which is in England, to parents Frankie Smith and Jordan Hobson. Frankie was born in Bradford. Her parents were Yvonne Spinley and Andrew Smith. Frankie grew up in Belden, a prosperous suburb. She attended the Titus Salt School. She had a half-brother and a half-sister growing up. At the age of 16 years old, Frankie was described by a psychologist as being abnormally compliant. They also pointed out that Frankie had an IQ of only 70. And as we discussed prior on this channel, the average IQ is considered to be around 90 to 110. I say around because um, I looked at several charts and they all vary by a few numbers here and there, but 70 to 79 shows borderline impaired or delayed so she was on the low end of borderline, but she was considered to be the bottom 2% of the population IQ wise. The psychologist also pointed out that at the age of 16, Frankie was still playing with Barbie dolls, though I'm not certain that that alone means impaired or delayed in any way. Frankie was said to be very immature, even for her young age. Her parents split up, so she was raised in a single-parent household, but she lived next door to her grandparents, Anita Smith and David Fawcett. They were very close, and she spent a lot of time at their house. After the trial, Yvonne spoke out and described her daughter, Frankie. Um, she said, quote, She's very immature and vulnerable throughout her life. She didn't have any ambition or aims in life, but she was not nasty. She was just always very innocent and very vulnerable. She wasn't the brightest of kids. She was just a sweet kid, but she never properly grew up. Even as a teenager, she was into dolls, toys, Justin Bieber, and other pop stars that were mainly with younger girls. She's never had a job and mainly relies on family and benefits. It was pointed out that highlighted interactions with Frankie and an opportunity for elderly help was missed during Frankie's pregnancy because she wasn't seen by an antenatal help visitor. Okay, not being from England, I had not heard of an antenatal health visitor, so I looked it up and they actually visit the family during 28 to 32 weeks of pregnancy. And this is to develop a relationship with the family and help support the family as they transition into parenthood. And then they assist the mother with the child and the child's health and developmental reviews. Um, it seems like a support team of sorts. If this had been done and the health visitor would have had contact with Star in the early stages of her life, the outcome of this story could have been different. I'm not going to say it definitely would have, but it could have been. Frankie was only 17. She was a month away from turning 18 when Star was born. Everyone around them said that Frankie was a good mother at first. She would tell people that the birth of little Star with her little round face and her bright blue eyes was the best thing that ever happened to her. When Star was only a few months old, however, Frankie began leaving Star with anyone who would watch her to go out partying. In September, Frankie and Jordan's relationship ended. Jordan then returned to college where he was studying criminology in Sunderland. Frankie began drinking and partying even more. 
She enjoyed drinking in the pubs in Bradford and was often seen out drinking with her mother, Yvonne. At this point, Star was still being loved, cared for, and protected as Frankie had a very large family that all loved Star and had no problem watching her or meeting her needs. One night, while Frankie was out drinking in the Sun Pub, she met a bouncer and amateur boxer named Savannah Brockhill. She was also a security guard and a dog handler. Savannah would later testify in court that she grew up in an English gypsy family and left school at the early age of 10. Though Frankie had never shown interest in a romantic relationship with a female in the past, she said she fell for her confident personality and quickly became obsessed with Savannah. Frankie's mother, Yvonne, said, quote, when she started dating Savannah, it was a shock to me because there was nothing in Frankie's behavior that suggested she liked other females. But to be honest, she never showed that much interest in boys either. She was just not that kind of girl who was obsessed with sex." Unquote. What Frankie's family didn't know when the relationship started, however, was Savannah's previous relationship ended due to Savannah abusing her previous girlfriend. Her girlfriend had to take out a restraining order against her to keep her away. Savannah described herself as a psycho, which I can't say that I disagree with. Um, Guys and girls need to remember the fact that Frankie is with me. She keeps getting a lot of message requests and friends requests. She's not going to accept, especially tramps like you. And if you want to keep your kneecaps, I suggest you stop sending her them. She's with the number one psycho. Her jealousy of Frankie started almost immediately. Frankie was described as a beautiful woman who had no problem attracting attention. According to many of Frankie's family members, soon after the relationship between Frankie and Savannah started, not only did Frankie change, but Star went from being a happy and bubbly and playful little girl to being sad, distant, and withdrawn. Everyone around them knew something was wrong. They just couldn't imagine how wrong. Savannah insisted that Frankie implement a strict eating and sleeping routine. Per Frankie's best friend and often Star's babysitter, Holly Jones, Savannah was jealous of Star and her last name. She didn't like Star having Jordan's last name. She wanted Frankie to change Star's last name to Brockhill. She said Star no longer belonged to Jordan. She now belonged to Savannah, and that's not how that works. But clearly, by Savannah's own actions, this wasn't because she loved her so much that she wanted to be involved in her life. It was nothing more than jealousy. Savannah would attack Frankie often, leaving her with black eyes and bruises all across her body. Let me add, so there's no confusion real fast, though, that I am not saying in any way this excuses Frankie for what ends up happening to Baby Star, because in my honest opinion, it does not. It actually shows that she was indeed allowing this to happen, as she would leave Star with Savannah often, and due to Savannah's treatment of Frankie, she knew what Savannah was capable of. But Holly sensed that um, something was wrong, so she told Frankie that she would keep Star on the weekends so that Frankie could go out and enjoy herself. And Frankie was very happy with his offer and started dropping Star off at Holly's each weekend. She quickly started seeing signs on Frankie that there was DV in her relationship and soon after she started noticing signs of DV on Star. On the 23rd of January of 2020, only three months into the relationship between Savannah and Frankie, Holly made the first call to social services. I have never been employed by social services, um, especially not in England, but would they not get a more accurate visual of a family unit using the element of surprise? Well, instead, social services contacted Frankie and told her they received a call about Star and that they would be there in an hour. Frankie told them that her family and some of her friends didn't like that she was in a girl-girl relationship, and that's why the call was made. 
social services didn't even go to the home, which I'm sure that they're supposed to do following a report, at least in America. Two officers did, however. They arrived to a very clean house. They reported back to social services that the house was neat and clean and they didn't see anything wrong. Social services from there decided though they hadn't seen Star or the bruises that Holly saw on her, she was safe and they just closed the case. And this is so frustrating to me because um, many mistakes are made in these stories and because of not paying attention to facts that are so obvious. I had a comment on here a few stories ago that if I don't work for social services, I can't understand what they go through and no one knows who doesn't do the job. And to this, I'm gonna say, the problem is the people hired to do this job too often don't. And they may lose their job at best, but children lose their lives which is a much worse outcome than the loss of a job. But Holly said she was so frustrated by this. Um, luckily, the call was anonymous, so Frankie did not isolate Star from Holly at this time. A few days later, uh, Frankie's sister, Alicia Zeppler, received a message from Savannah saying that she was broken and would knife someone that night if she found out Frankie was cheating. She asked Frankie's sister if she was cheating. She went on to say that she planned to confront Frankie that evening and she didn't care if there was children in the house or not. She said they are going to need the police. In February of 2020, Frankie contacted her grandparents after all of this had happened with social services and Savannah's insane jealousy and asked them if they, if they would take Star until Frankie could get her life back together and they were more than happy to do so which again proves that Frankie had a way out, at least for Star. I always say if stressed, contact someone you trust and ask them to take the children and give you a break. Not everyone has a loved one willing to do this, but I like to think most do, and clearly Frankie did. When Frankie arrived at her grandparents, they said, as Holly had also said, that they were shocked to see how withdrawn and lethargic Star was acting. She had always been so playful, bubbly, and happy. Star's great-grandparents, David Fawcett and Anita Smith, said within only a couple of days, the old star they knew was back. She was again happy and safe and gaining weight, at least for 11 weeks. On the 15th of March, Savannah texted one of her friends and told her she thinks she is mentally effed up. And I agree. She told her she tried to off herself and Frankie by driving off a cliff the night before. She said that Frankie grabbed the wheel. She then said, see no evil, I'm out of control. And clearly the self-proclaimed psycho was spiraling further out of control at this point. In April of 2020, Frankie showed up at her grandparents, um, Star's great grandparents without any warning and just took Star away from them. She didn't want to go, but Frankie took her kicking and screaming. In fact, a neighbor testified in court that Star was terrified to go with Frankie and that she could hear her screaming all the way down the path. On the 3rd of May in 2020, Anita, Frankie's grandmother, that had been looking after Star, made a report to social services concerning the safety of Star. On the 4th of May, social services made an unannounced visit to Frankie's residence and deemed Star safe and well. They again believe Frankie's story that her family disagreed with her being in a girl-girl relationship and simply called to be malicious. Frankie did give permission for them to do police checks, however. Frankie began to stop letting David and Anita see Baby Star, but on the 16th of May, they were at a birthday party and Star was there. When the party was over, David received a text from Frankie that said, I've heard you were picking up Star. Please don't do that. If anyone makes contact, I'll call the police. Don't you ever touch Star again. She's our Star, our baby. Don't you ever come near her again. I do love you, David, but I never thought you'd try to take Star away from me. On the 18th of May, Frankie, Savannah, and Star met Yvonne at a pub for lunch. Star wasn't eating her lunch, so Savannah made her face the wall in the pub. Yvonne complained about this as a grandma, I would have too. 
And Frankie told her mom, Star is my daughter and I'll bring her up how I want. Alicia, Frankie's sister, stayed in contact with Jordan, Star's father, and she saw videos that Frankie and Savannah posted online. Um, they concerned her, not just the treatment of Star in the videos, but the marks and bruises that were on her. She sent it all to Jordan. But now I know that how it goes is that my dreams never die as long as I keep the magic inside. On the 21st of June in 2020, Jordan contacted social services after seeing the videos and the pictures. The police went to the home and saw the bruises, but when Frankie was asked, she told the police that Star had hit her head on a coffee table. A medical examination was done, and two bruises were found on Star's little cheek and four on the back of her leg. Not long after this, Savannah and Frankie were in the Sun Pub, and for reasons unknown to anyone but Savannah and Frankie, she punched Frankie in the face and chipped her tooth. The police came, but both Frankie and Savannah told them it was an accident, and they accepted the explanation. She then posted online, I am a psycho when it comes to my girlfriend, and I wouldn't mind putting anyone in a wheelchair for the rest of their life if they so much as look at her wrongly. Keep safe. Don't message my girlfriend. A few nights later, Frankie went out without Savannah, and Savannah sent Frankie over 200 messages and calls, along with a video of Savannah licking blood off of the wall with the caption, I will knife someone tonight. On the 8th of July in 2020, Frankie got a text that the social worker's case following Jordan's cry for help was closed and again, Star's injuries were being ignored by the system designed to save her. One day during this time period, Frankie, Savannah, Holly, and Star went out to eat, but Frankie and Savannah only bought food for the adults. So Holly started feeding Star her french fries and Star accidentally bit Holly's finger. Savannah saw it and was furious and she asked Frankie, are you, are you just gonna allow Star to bite Holly? Frankie grabbed little Star's hand and bit her finger hard. Savannah has now started keeping Star more. In fact, she started taking her to work with her, which I can't understand this, as Frankie never had a job, but Savannah took her to work with her where she worked security at the Echo Power Environmental Plant in Bankwood Lane, New Rossington, near Doncaster. D.C. Johnson testified at trial that on the 20th of July, per CCTV footage, Savannah is seen leaving the flat with Star, headed to work. Star had no visible bruising on her at this time. She then showed photos that were taken that evening, and there was extensive bruising. A few days later, both Savannah and Frankie are seen leaving the flat with Star. Johnson points out that you could see clearly Savannah put her arms out, blocking Frankie from helping Star. She had an obvious limp, which they learned later was extensive fracturing of the leg, consistent with twisting. Star was holding on tight to the railing, but she still fell headfirst down the steps. Frankie and Savannah just laughed. On the 27th of August in 2020, a video of bruises on Star's face was sent to the police. The police attempted to visit the couple to check on Star, but they weren't able to locate them and a call to Frankie didn't help. She told the police they were in Scotland and that Star was with them. And it was right after that that Frankie and Savannah got the idea to make funny videos or what they call funny and I call cruel. They forced Star to stay awake for a long period of time to assure that she was exhausted. And then they sat her in a plastic chair with food in front of her in a bowl. And then they videoed her as she was about to pass out. Her head fell into the food and she was asleep. She then fell out of the chair. They laughed and made comments. Uh, Savannah was heard saying close one and they added background music like this was normal. 
and then they posted a video online. They also added the same video online from Savannah's phone from a, from a different angle and in slow motion. And again, Savannah signed off of her video with See No Evil. She may not see evil, but she is evil. They learned that before doing this, searches were made for Frankie's phone. Um, she had been looking up how long a body can last without sleep. On the 2nd of September in 2020, Star's biological great-grandfather, Frank Smith, made a call to social services after he saw yet another video of Star with visible bruising. A social service worker contacted Frankie and she told them that her daughter fell down the stairs and she claimed she'd already went over this with a previous social services worker. The social service worker did note in the file that Star was clearly exhausted and lethargic as she tried to walk and walked right into the sofa and fell down. The social services worker told Frankie she would see her on the 4th of September, so the one who called her did nothing. However, authorities found no record of a previous contact. On the 3rd of September, social services GP contacted Frankie and told her that Star is to be seen by a doctor and Frankie agreed, but never followed through with it. On the 4th of September, social services again closed the case saying no further actions needed, when honestly, no action was taken. Another video was shown in court by Johnson. This was another video captured on CCTV at, at the Echo Power Environmental Plant. This was on the 13th of September. The video shows Savannah slapping Star nine times, punching Star seven times, grabbing her twice, and then it shows Star fall out of the car on one occasion and Savannah grabbed her by the neck and threw her back in the car. When the footage was shown in court, Frankie began sobbing and had to look away. There was a photo taken that day where Star had bruising on her cheeks, eyes, nose, and forearm. She was proud of what she'd done. There was also CCTV footage shown of Frankie forcibly dragging Star through the town center, her head hitting the floor because she wouldn't walk. And to be fair, Frankie said she wouldn't walk, but she couldn't walk is more accurate. As I mentioned, she had severe fractures to her leg from being twisted. With this, a series of texts was sent back and forth between Frankie and Savannah discussing who holds Star under the water the longest when they punish her. And I've read that in a few of these stories, and to me, that's sick. He then showed more CCTV footage taken at the couple's flat of Frankie dragging Star down the steps again, letting her little head hit the steps. On the 15th of September, social services closed the case on Star on the grounds concerns were unsubstantiated and the referrals were made maliciously. On the 22nd of September in 2020, Savannah makes a ridiculously calm call to 999, which is it's um, in America would be 911. I'm in the service. Is the patient breathing? Uh, yes, yeah, she's breathing. Is she conscious? Uh, yeah, um, yeah. She's got, um, a bit of both, really. Basically, it's me partner's daughter. It's my little girl as well. I brought her up. Um, we've got all three children here playing. And uh, I was in the kitchen making a coffee. And they've been in the living room. And I heard uh, a bang. So I came came out and the little lad stood there and the little girl's on the floor and um, she she was crying and then she stopped crying and then she was sick and now she's just a little bit floppy to be honest with you. And what do you know how what the bang was? Uh, no, I don't know what the, I don't know if she's fallen off the off of the sofa or I don't know. Just just the you know, the three of them playing with this. Right. And he just, he just said, start, and when I walked in, she was led on the floor. Push, darling. So you heard a bang, the patient was on the floor. I've heard a bang, yeah. I came in, and the little lad was saying, star, which is the little girl. Yeah. So, I've, I've obviously, I've, I've, I shouted the mum in, so sit up, star. So I sat her up, 
and I started to rub her back because she was like breathing but like struggling. Yeah. So I was rubbing her back. Um, she started to be sick, so I led her on the floor. Yeah. Got her in like CPR position, started to run her, run her back. Um, she started to lose lose breath, so I performed CPR on her. So you've done CPR on her. Yeah, I've done CPR. I've got her in the position, the recovery position now. The call was in reference to now 16-month-old star Hobson. Medics arrived at the flat in West Yorkshire around 3.49 p.m. They described Star at the time of their arrival as lifeless, pale, and wearing only a nappy, which in America we call a diaper. It turned out after the injury to Star, Savannah and Frankie waited 15 minutes before dialing 999 to get their story straight. They testified that Star was in cardiac arrest and they attempted CPR. Star vomited large amounts of brown material and they used a suction device to remove it. She was then rushed to Airedale Hospital just six minutes away. The doctors did everything they could to save poor Star, but they were not able. They said the injuries which took Star's life involved extensive damage to her abdominal cavity caused by severe blows, either in the form of punching, stomping, or kicking in the abdomen. They also testified that there was a number of other injuries on her little body that meant in the course of her short life, Star had suffered a number of significant injuries at different times. Star was repeatedly physically assaulted over the weeks and months before she passed. She was found to have two fractures to her right shin bone by forceful twisting. She had a fractured skull, an old brain injury. She had a fracture to the back of her skull and bruising, much of which is considered to be non-accidental in origin. Frankie testified that some of the injuries came from Savannah doing a maneuver known as a slam choke on Star which involved picking her up off her feet by her neck, holding her there for a few seconds, and then throwing her on the bed. It sounds like what wrestlers call a choke slam, because I remember the term as my son and nephews wrestled and my husband coached for several years. Savannah said that she did this to toughen up Star. She was trying to toughen up a year old baby girl. Savannah was charged with unaliving Baby Star. Frankie was charged with causing or allowing the unaliving of Baby Star. The judge first talked to Frankie. Despite the evidence, you failed to seek help. You failed to disassociate from Savannah, continuing the relationship for your own ends. You allowed her into your flat, gave unsupervised access to Star. I do accept you were the victim of DV and your immaturity, but I find your offending falls squarely in category A, high culpability. You also lied to the police going along with the suggestion to make up a story. You were both absent from the room. Once again, you protected Savannah at the expense of finding out what happened to your daughter. Your offense carries a maximum of 14 years and you allowed what happened to Star. I must decide your level of culpability. Did you take steps to protect Star from serious cruelty and force? I must consider what you knew or ought to know. I am sure you knew the bruising on Star's cheeks in July was caused by Savannah. There is no other plausible explanation. You knew a fall on the bed could not explain that bruise. While I accept your intelligence may be limited, I don't accept you could not appreciate Star had been slapped hard by Savannah. After September, you said the marks on this baby are ridiculous. You were so suspicious Savannah was abusing Star, you googled how to get an injunction. You must have known the only causes for those bruises were your partner was abusing her. I have seen images of the bruises to Star, and if you did not cause them, then you must have understood they were not accidental. They were too numerous, too extensive. Others were raising concerns too. While I see your family have suffered unlawful attacks due to your conduct, I don't factor that in. You brought that upon yourself and your family.
To Savannah, the judge says, there are other photos of bruising on Star, which, which if you didn't cause, you must have known about. These must have been excruciating for her. This is the first serious aggravating factor. I am also sure you injured Star on September 12th and 13th, again in your sole care at the recycling plant. The CCTV footage shows you viciously punching and slapping Star over a number of hours. I don't accept your excuses. You were beating Star repeatedly. Her face was badly bruised. Her nose was scratched. Her arms and hands and feet were bruised. I am sure the old intestinal injuries were caused by you. I am also sure that you injured Star on September 12th or 13th. So for you, Savannah Brockhill, all I can give you is life imprisonment, but must give you a minimum term by which you can go before the parole board. You may never be released. And if you are, you will be on license for the rest of your life. I must decide a starting point. I have decided it should be one of 15 years. I do find that this fatal attack was a culmination of a course of sadistic attacks by you and Frankie. You would lash out in rage. Frankie, you were callous and thought in only your own interests. Frankie Smith, for allowing the unaliving of your daughter, you get eight years. You must serve two-thirds before being considered for release. Your 443 days on remand will be factored in. You can sit down. In March of 2022, instead of being paroled, however, Frankie's sentence was extended by four years. Her sentence was deemed as too soft. She was devastated to get the news and had to be placed on self-protection watch to keep her from unaliving herself. The inmate was heard yelling to the guard, leave her cell door open, leave it open. Savannah Brockhill is serving her time at Style Prison in Cheshire. Apparently, she's not Miss Tough Gal now, as she has to be escorted by four or five officers every time she leaves her own cell for her own protection. Another inmate said that every time you see her, however, she's gloating with a big smile on her face and has never shown remorse. She was actually heard joking that she actually unalived three other children. Despite being hated by inmates, it was revealed that Savannah had has many admirers on the outside that send her letters, cards, and money. So much money, in fact, that she purchases many gifts and sends them home to friends and family regularly. She brutally unalived a baby, and this got her fans. I mean, come on, people do better. There are so many people to choose from that deserve the attention, and she does not. She just doesn't. Star was laid to rest in Kegley's shared churchyard. Her family gave her a respectful burial. Her family stated that they believe Frankie made mistakes, but doesn't feel she deserves what she got, though they feel Savannah should never walk free. And I'm going to say that I do understand the feelings and pain from Frankie's family, but I feel like she got off too easy. Low IQ and immaturity does not excuse what happened, she had options and she knew she had options. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of Baby Star's story. And as always, rest easy, Star. Rest easy, baby girl. You're free and you will never be forgotten. If you have not done so and you get anything out of this content, please just take a moment to like and subscribe. And until the next video, toodles. I am a narcissist crippled with self-doubt. I've got a courage. That brings me to my knees I am equal parts